to another edition of Navajo County Connection. I'm Donna Faye Weitzinger from the Navajo County Board of, Board of Supervisors representing District 5 and I have here with me uh, Jason Whiting on the Navajo County Board of Supervisors uh, representing District 3. Uh, today we'll be talking about economic development and we have Paul Watson who's joining us today and I'll give Paul an opportunity to introduce himself. He's been on the show numerous times but he's been in a variety of capacities. You've been in our community supporting um, different um, townships um, and economic growth in a variety of ways. And now you have a new hat, so why don't you introduce yourself? I do. As of uh, two months now, I've been the uh, assistant county manager slash economic development director for Navajo County and uh, happy to be in that position and happy to be here to talk about things going on in the world of economic development. So just to, uh, so people have a little insight to what's going on in the county, what made you decide to join the county? Um, coercion? No. <laughs> right? Uh, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor <laughs> Whiting is very persuasive. <laughs> no, uh, actually, uh, in my role previous to this, I was the uh, manager for the town of Snowflake and uh, a very significant portion of my time was spent on economic development for the community of Snowflake. Um, as many of you are aware, um, the Apache Railway, which was part of a uh, catalyst paper mill, was an issue that we were heavily involved in, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about that in a little bit. But yeah. um, and then trying to bring back industry to replace the paper mill that we lost at the end of 2012 uh, became a real priority for the community and, and for myself. Um, so it was kind of a natural. I was working on economic development and this was an opportunity to take that to the next level, if you will. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I not only represent uh, Navajo County, but I represent the region as the executive director for the Real AZ Development Council. And uh, I think we'll talk a little bit about that too. Well, yep, we'll talk about that in just a second. I know, well, I'm grateful that you've decided to join us. I know that your experience is quite extensive in um, advocating for economic growth in our communities. And um, this allows for another layer in a sense and um, allowing the advocation at the legislative level as well as um, supporting our um, supervisors and across the county and ensuring that we're we're focusing on economic growth so well, we're happy you. that you joined us thank you i'm happy to be here you know paul's a, a breath of fresh air i uh, i worked with the chamber of commerce uh, over in snowflake and taylor for a number of years and uh, after doing that then i went on to the uh, snowflake town council at that time i got a chance to work with paul and one of the first things i noticed was um, his regional awareness as well as his network. He was well respected in the region. He knew most of the other communities pretty well, um, had been involved with them in different partnerships, and, uh, and that really opened the door for collaboration with the, with the region. And, uh, and so he's, he's been a great partner um, at that level, and then it only made sense when, uh, when his name came forward and we looked at that uh, for filling the position that was needed. Um, I'm, I'm really glad that you decided to come across. I think that it makes a lot of sense. I think you'll be able to continue your efforts. You obviously helped a lot there in the way of economic development and trying to look at uh, ways to partner with industry um, and making it an environment where they feel like this is the place to be. And I think that we're starting to see some traction and results because of that. So thanks for your partnership and willingness to come on board. Thank you. And that was the paid Political <laughs> campaign for Paul Watson. No. I was going to say, <laughs> if you were applying for another job, you could just send that. <laughs> but we were trying to uh, determine how to structure this conversation because Supervisor Whiting participates a large part in this conversation. And we'll go ahead and jump into it. And, you know, you can answer as you will you know if you um, supervisor Whiting was going to be a host as well but he has a great deal of knowledge within this area and one of the first things is talking about the real AZ Development Council um, just to give everybody an idea what is the rural 
a real AZ Development Council? Well, I'm the executive director, but he's the uh, chairman, so I'll let him give an introduction. I, I think, in, in short, real AZ and what it is, is, is a regional, it's that short, it's a regional economic development focus. It's bringing the communities, um, the entities uh, together that were within northeastern Arizona to work together to try and, and drive economic development. Um, the one thing that I noticed personally as they started this endeavor and looking at this region, we're pretty diverse in what we have and, the, and what's available. Um, we have what a lot of the other state doesn't have, we have water. You know, we have things like the railroad, we have the I-40 that runs straight through it, we have trees, you know, we have Sunrise that has a ski run, and then we have petrified forest. We've got natural uh, resources such as the trees, such as potash that's in the ground. We have a lot to offer in this region, including a lot of land availability that's not state or federal. There's a lot of private land holdings. So we have a lot to talk about as a region. Individually, though, as individual communities, a lot of times I absolutely love our local sports and what we do in our local sports. I participate in, in the uh, razzing of teams and those. I, I am not trying to, but, <laughs> but sometimes we forget to let that go after Friday night and, and to work together regionally. And, uh, and this group is focused on regionally coming together as a united voice to say we're here, this is what we have and what's available. And, and I recognize, and I think we all recognize, that people will drive to work. We need industry and we need jobs. And we have the ability to try and bring in jobs that will affect the whole region. You know, uh, as the industry goes, we're industry goes, we can't take potash and transplant it up in Pine Top Lakeside, or we can't take it and transplant it. It, it sits where it sits. But if that was to develop into a potash mine, that's going to be good for the whole region. There'll be jobs, there'll be new monies that are introduced into the region. And so the focus of this group truly is take off your Friday night jersey that you wear, set it to the side, and let's focus on who we are as a region and try and, and market that to the rest of the world, quite frankly. So when, you, oh, just jump in, when you say region, what does that mean? Who are the participants um, participating in this council? Yeah, it's, um, basically it is Navajo and Apache County and uh, the communities uh, within those two counties and uh, some collaboration and coordination with the uh, tribes that are contained within those two counties as well. And, and Jason made a good point. In fact, the uh, brand that we came up with, REAL, um, R-E-A-L, the R stands for resources, which he mentioned. Uh, e stands for energy, and we're seeing more and more renewable energy type projects mm -hmm. in the area. Uh, the A stands for access, which uh, he talked about, and uh, the L is the lifestyle, which is uh, the Friday night football games. No, it's, <laughs> it's a whole lot of things that we have to offer in this area. I, I think Supervisor Whiting is right. You know, we, we do have a diverse community and we have lots of opportunity. It's just kind of tapping into that opportunity. And um, so what are some of the current projects that you're working on? You know, it, it's, it's a good point. Um, first off, you have to know what you have to offer, right? If you're going to compete um, on a state, national, and even international basis for attracting industry and jobs, you got to know what you have that sets you apart. So one of the first things we're in the process of doing right now is uh, an assessment of what are the assets we have, what are the natural resources we have, uh, what are the existing industries that we have uh, that could be improved, expanded, um, and what are their needs. And we're doing that through a survey instrument that I have um, uh, sent out to uh, the various cities, towns, and uh, the counties um, to respond to. We'll gather that data and that will help us to uh, kind of put together our marketing package, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next piece of that, uh, that actually um, uh, Channel 4 and Navajo County are helping to put together is um, uh, we will be actually touring 
the various assets that are available in these communities and in the uh, two counties and putting together a video that kind of highlights what is the uh, economic base and what are the economic opportunities in this region. Um, so I'm really looking forward to completing both of those projects. Um, those are to help us get started, right? But as far as actual projects we're working on to bring in more jobs, um, we recently responded to a request for a large um, operation, and it's, it's not a done deal. I have to make that clarification. But it was a uh, significant um, project that uh, would employ well over 200, uh, closer to 300 employees. And uh, it seems like we had the assets uh, that were a fit for that particular industry. Mm -hmm. And in particular, the rail. They needed the rail access, um, which uh, is one of the things that we're working on as well to keep that going. Um, so those are some of the things. Supervisor Whiting, I don't know if you have. Before you move on, I got a little note that we're um, channel 56. Is it channel 56? Yep, and not channel 4. Uh -oh. So we don't confuse everyone. <laughs> but um, when you talk about, and I know that this is some of the conversation, um, when we talk about the railway. So why is the railway so important to our community? Yeah, it's. Um, it, most of the industry either existing or that we are talking to about relocating to this area all talk about the importance of the rail. And the reason is it provides a economical transportation opportunity both to the East Coast and to the West Coast, particularly to the West Coast um, from our location here. Uh, so the Apache Railway ties into the BNSF, the main line, which goes all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast uh, in Holbrook. And that connection and that opportunity provides uh, great opportunities for bringing in supplies and hauling out product. Um, and that's real key to the industries that we're talking to right now. And I know that you've been a big champion for this. Um, what are some of the things that um, you've seen in its impact to our community? Well, with the Apache Railway, <coughs> a couple of things. I mean, there's there's a current, um, really, I mean, there's 150 jobs tied to that rail right now. So obviously that rail is really important because 150 jobs to this area is, is significant. We, we definitely don't want an opportunity to, to lose that. Not only do we not want to lose, we want to gain. Mm -hmm. That railway, just to give a brief, just a brief history, that railway really was there to serve and, and support the paper mill. When the paper mill left, it lost you know, one of the main utilizers of that railroad. That railroad, the, the paper mill really wasn't in the railroad business. They were looking to bring in you know, for, the, for the paper mill what they needed. They did have the uh, pig farm and a couple of other contracts that were tied to it, but not a whole lot more than that. And so the reality is when they went and that paper mill was sold off to as we affectionately call them scrappers <laughs> when it was sold to scrappers we recognized when i was over on the snowflake town council and paul was there we recognized that there was a good chance that it was going to be sold to scrappers as well and so um, there were some strategies that, that we put together and we we pushed to try and make sure that uh, when the scrappers purchased that that they would have us at the table negotiating with them to keep that rail in existence now you have a lot of people in the communities that will come up to me not understanding the situation and very great questions. I'm glad people are engaging, but they'll ask, if this is so viable, why isn't the private sector coming along and purchasing it? And, and a lot of it has to do with finances. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go and you get a loan on something like this type of a rail, the asset and its value doesn't typically play a lot into it. It's, it's the business. What is it generating in the way of income that dictates that? Well, when you lose your major user, which is the paper mill, yeah. the banks are only going to give so much for a loan. When the scrap value is worth 10 to $15 million and the value of the railroad, because of that structure of how the loan will work, is worth a million to two million, somewhere in that area, they're probably going to go with the scrap value. It's, mm -hmm. it's considerably more. Big picture for us in the region, now at Navajo County looking at this, and even for the United States, um, they spent, you know, approximately, it cost around, the numbers that I'm hearing is around 70 million 
to replace that. She has $70 million to put one in. If it goes, it's not coming back. Mm -hmm. So this, looking at the today, now, oh, we can get 10 million, or we can sell it to the, you know, to the existing um, area, we're opting to try and find long-term funding to buy out the creditor to be able to continue forward. And I say we, I'm wearing my, my regional cap. That's not Navajo County. That's not the town of Snowflake, but um, the Snowflake, what's it called? The Snowflake, Snowflake Community Foundation. That, mm -hmm. that actually owns that stock. Yeah. And so we've tried to partner with that organization in helping them as they've gone down this path of trying to secure long-term funding. And right now they're working towards that. Um, with the USDA, it looks very positive. We hope that uh, within the coming weeks, we'll have a very positive announcement and a lot of the stress will will be relieved. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully so. Well, you can see how important the railway is to our community. Um, without it, future economic development within the region could be really difficult. And for future um, businesses to grow their business, those are the things that they look at, you know, and trying to get their product or their resources in or their products out. So those things are, a, you know, the fundamental importance. Going back to, you know, this, that's one of the projects under the Real AZ Development Council. Um, there's membership to the council. Do you want to talk a little bit about the membership? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll touch on that one briefly. Um, so in order for us to do the marketing and the other efforts that, that we need to do, um, we've established a, a membership. And uh, for a city or town within the region, it is $5,000 for an annual membership. Uh, for an employer, and we have several right now, and there's more that uh, I'm working on. Uh, for an employer with 50 or more employees, it's $2,500 annually. And with uh, 49 or less, uh, it's $1,000 annually. And then we have another category for nonprofits, education, other types of uh, entities and institutions, and that one's a minimum of $500 contribution. And that's what helps us put together the funding we need, uh, actually, to be totally honest. Part of it helps pay my salary. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, yeah. But a majority of that funding actually is going towards uh, uh, helping us with marketing and other efforts to, uh, to get our name out there. Mm -hmm. When we looked at that structure and tried to put that together, <coughs> recognizing that the communities are all hurting up here, we need to go and take a step forward so we don't start taking more steps back and trying to drive new uh, economic development into the area. So looking at that dollar amount for the communities to participate really that funding um, is not to say here's $5,000 and when's my whatever industry coming. That's just quite frankly anybody that really knows how this works, $5,000 doesn't do anything towards that. Um, but regionally if we pool that money together it allows us to be able to and we've worked very closely with Steve North, he's been strategic and part of it. He works at the economic development with uh, the city of Sholo and then he also sits with us at uh, Real AZ and putting together a marketing plan and strategy. Mm -hmm. That money pulled together is truly the, just for the ability to go out and brand our area and, and identify what we have and, and bring some awareness to this region, which is just a kick in the bucket. I mean, there's not, that's not a lot of money. There's a little bit that goes to, to Paul's salary, but for the majority of it, that's marketing money. Even more than that, I would say, is we now are asking that the cities or towns or the entities involved commit an individual to being a part of this organization. And that individual is just as important, not if even more so. Mm -hmm. Because we need to know on the ground from, again, let's say that it's St. John's or let's say that it's Sholo or um, Taylor or Snowflake or Holbrook or whatever, that what they have going on, what's important to them, what assets they have in their communities, we need to know from them and then we need a, a mouthpiece that's at the table with us talking and making decisions that then is able to relay and communicate back with the city councils or the business that they work for or whatnot to let them know what's going on so that there's, there's flow back and forth. The lines of communication need to be opened up and there needs to be a regional audience at the table working together to drive economic development. Yeah, absolutely. And just to give you an example, a lot of times when there is a site selector who's uh, looking to relocate or expand 
on behalf of an industry. That site selector will send out a request and many times you have seven to ten days to respond. Um, and that response has to be everything from all the infrastructure that's in place, what's the power availability, all of those kinds of things, uh, as well as uh, land and other assets, right? Um, and that's not something that one person sitting in an office can provide. That's something that everybody has to be at the table, as uh, Supervisor Whiting just said. So it's real important for me when I get those requests to have somebody that I reached out to across the region mm -hmm. to say, here's a particular request we have, here's what they're looking for, tell me what you have that meets these requirements. And then from there, we put together the package and get it back to that site selector, which sometimes is through the Arizona Commerce Authority, sometimes it's a direct contact with us. Um, but we really need to act quickly on those kinds of responses. And I think even when a company is seeking to come to the mountain and maybe they don't know particular areas and so that gives you the ability to advocate and you know, you know, this particular region, they have water, they have, you know, land, they have all the resources that this particular company is looking for. So all of those um, voices allow for you to better understand the region. I think I think it's a great opportunity and also building continuity and conversation so that all of the region um, is working together in some capacity and I know that with other organizations we've tried to do that in building objectives for the entire region so all of our resources are going in that one particular um, avenue or objective because it becomes really difficult as you know you know you're you're wasting your time if you're you're all over the place trying to develop what that's going to look like or everybody is every man for himself and we certainly don't want that and so that's why these um, organizations are so important my little yeah. earpiece keeps yeah. popping out here you know the other comment I'd make in that regard is um, it's also important for everybody, and when I mean everybody, in particular the, the industries and the existing government agencies, to have a focus on that, right? That, that, that it's not just somebody doing it on their behalf, because um, from a government standpoint, they have to look at their policies, uh, their zoning, um, all of those kinds of legislative issues that are also a big piece of attracting industry um, and so they have to be focused on what they really want and how they want to try and attract that as well so it's not a one-person job to do economic development mm -hmm. it really is everybody working together and kind of the uh, the saying that I've adopted at least for myself um, is that a rising tide lifts all boats, right? Um, and I do, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I really do believe that when it comes to economic development from an industrial standpoint. If you create jobs in, in a region, everybody benefits. It, it, it moves throughout the communities in various capacities. Um, so that's my passion and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, I'm so grateful for that. I got the uh, comment that we need to wrap up and I could see um, when we're thinking about economic development in our community, that it's not just about developing companies so companies can make dollars. That's important because we want them to bring tax dollars. Um, it's also important to provide jobs um, to increase capacity of our community. We want more community members who love living in our county and that's part of having a job that they can provide for their family. And so when you talk about what the impact is and why it's so important. Those are some of the fundamental reasons. So when we, when you're thinking about economic development in our community, there's certainly more conversations, and this is a background conversation, um, that we're talking about forest energy, that there's Novo Power, Novo, Novo Star, um, that when we talk about four fry and we talk about the Forest Service, that all of these things are impacting our c county in some capacity. So we're grateful for the work that the both of you do in trying to ensure that we're having a strong conversation around that.
So we're going to wrap up here, and we're grateful that you were able to join us today. Um, I know that summer is coming to an end and that the kids will be going back to school soon. So we hope that you enjoy your last leg of summer and make sure you go fishing. Thank you.